I would like to know what, what kind of problems do you solve in your daily business? Yeah, normally, I mean, we do most of all business to business, business mm -hmm. and business to government. I mean, that's that's the kind of problem areas we see. Yeah. yeah. So uh, very often uh, governments come to us yeah. more on the mapping side. Yeah. They have some idea about what's changing in their landscape. Okay. And they would like to use uh, satellite data or aerial data to mm -hmm. try to understand. I mean, yeah. somebody came to us yeah. and said, "Hey." Uh, we know some people built illegal houses here. Yeah. Can you find them for us? Yeah. And not only can you find the house, can you find changes on the house, yeah. right? Uh, is there a balcony extended or things like that, right? Mm -hmm. That's typically what a mapping agency or a municipality is interested in, in these kind of problems. So from their perspective, that's more taxation, right? Um, then we come um, certainly to the industry side. Um, some people are just interested how landscapes changed, right, for various purposes, environmental monitoring, for example. Um, now we have an interesting project that's uh, um, flying with uh, drones along facades and trying to not only to understand but to, to ex exactly measure how the surface of, um, of a building changes. For example, how many cracks and where are these cracks? And have these cracks expanded, for example? So insurances are interested in that. So the building owner, actually, that's the real customer for us, wants to have a map, a precise map of the damages at a certain facade at a certain time. So these type of problems to be come to us. This is a machine learning problem, actually? The implementation, yes. Right. And then mm -hmm. On the implementation side, we do a lot of uh, machine learning, mm -hmm. all these, uh, yeah, uh, we, we call it classification, right? So we first um, structure the image in certain segments, and then once we have found the, the interesting segments, we do classifiers, which are typically machine learning. But that's, in general, the second part of our exercise. The first part is actually, a, we call it a problem assessment, a deep dive interview with a stakeholder, because some of the things that look very or sound very simple, like what is a crack, are not simple, right? Because very often we need detailed information. How to distinguish a crack from an artifact or from a seasonal effect? Um, so we've also done some, some analytics on streets, for example, right? Cracks in streets. If there's a leaf on the, on the asphalt, that's not a damage. But if there is certainly a crack in, that is a damage. But they may look very similar. So these type of things, what is really, um, what do you look at in an image? That, that's the key point of our first endeavor, right? Finding out what the problem is. So we both know actually what the area can do, but looking at your clients specifically, do you think there's a, a gap, a knowledge gap? So you have to train, teach them what kind of problems can be solved with machine learning AI? Yeah, in general, there is a bit of a gap, right? So the um, our classic competition actually is not other software, it's the traditional way of operations. So someone has an inspector in the field, he takes with a pen and pencil on a clipboard, makes notes and says, oh, I see here a lot of damage, right? And I see the damage here and here and it makes notes, right? And that's what's typically embedded in the organization's process. That's the way of information capture we understand, right? And then in, in the first dialogue with these customers, we have very amazing uh, situations, right? Then they, they have us present what we can do. And then all of a sudden, all these questions come up. Oh, could you do this? Could you do this? Could you do this? So, um, but certainly sometimes we have to say no. And some of the things are too subtle, uh, too complicated or too comprehensive. But uh, we, in the beginning, we always have an interesting dialogue, right? How do you staff such a typical project? What kind of skills are needed from the team? Um, in, in general, I need two types of capabilities. So one thing is, call it the business analytics, the interview, the trying to grasp the real problem, including the capability of um, capturing data. So a bit of sensor know-how. You need to, so that's the, the, the first profile we need. Someone who understands, oh, a, a drone could do this and uh, a microscope can do that. Okay. Kind of a generalist who understands the business and the, the data capture side. And the second one is a, a programmer, right? A generalist programmer who can make a, a working prototype, right? Um, so take this, call it sometimes very general problem description into a first working prototype. That's the two key main skills. Everything else falls into place. The, the commercial side and then uh, the fine coding and testing and validation. That, that's all easier parts, but that's the two main things we need always on the team. 
to think there's a typical time such projects take, so it's months, it's weeks. Uh, typically months. The bigger well, things, so what we call an information factory, that is months, right? We certainly sometimes have nice and easy tasks, right? That is done in an afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, finding here um, white spots and, and, and red spots that's done in two minutes, mm -hmm. right? But um, everything of substance where people really have people in the field that in the end need this information, uh, we talk months, yeah. Thank you for the interview, Ralph. Yeah, sure. It was a pleasure to meet you. Cool. Guys, we would like to thank all the sponsors and participants and the speakers for attending MI Summit, the one and only free event in Munich regarding artificial intelligence. It will become even bigger for the next years because we believe that the science should be heaped on free.